stops. You can hardly see it. The blue Mercedes starting from pole position is already just falling behind just half a body length ahead. No better on the braking. Lucas Stolz is going to take the lead into the first quarter or keep the lead going around the outside, but hopefully not too far off the circuit. Is Raffaele Marcello? Has he been passed? Yes, the nose is in front of the number two Audi, but he's on the outside line. So Marcello moves back into second place, trying to gain places, not have any body damage. Looks as though there's a lot of light on our screen. Looks though. Number two Audi got pushed a little bit wide there, and Christopher Haas came into the mix as well. But what we can tell you is Lucas Stolz is leading the race. A few cars helping each other off the track in the midfield. Lucas Stolz leading for Raffaele Marcello. Wave yellow flags in the background. Third place, Christopher Haas. Fourth place, really good start from Kelvin van der Linde. Where is that number two Audi? And that, good to see the number one Audi, the championship leader, is still in the mix, but it got very, very tight in there. Yeah, the number one Audi's role is to basically finish fourth or higher at the end of one hour, and that might seem a rather straightforward task. But the difficulty here at Nürburgring is, as ever, is finding a way around the car that you're following. And you get too close, then you get losing your downforce, you lose your front end grip, and then you have to wait until there is damage to that idea. And that was coming through turn three into turn four. We saw a car go off track, and that is the result of a punctured tyre. There's no probably bodywork damage as well. Well, really unfortunate for Dries Van Tor. He was trying his utmost for the team as well as for himself and his teammate Will Stevenson uh, was trying to challenge for second place. He was pushed a little wide in his battle with Raffaele Marcello through turn two, was making up great lost ground. He was then making up ground between three and four where it all went wrong. I don't think Raffaele Marcello is going to get too stressed about running currently in second place. Principally because the number six uh, Mercedes is in the Silver Cup. Hope and Hart will not run at the same pace that we know that Michael Meadows can do. So while it is great to see the number six leading this race, in effect, by the time we get the round of pit stops and driver changes, the likely balance will favour the 88 Mercedes rather than the number six. There's a, the tyre change, the wheel change after the puncture on the opening lap for Dries Van Tor. Straight back into the race. He is stone last. OK, let's have a look at Audi 2 going wide. He just had the contact with the yellow and grey Mercedes of Raffaele Marcello. Christopher Haas starting to challenge and coming into the corner behind Cordarelli, back to about seventh place. And what happened as they went into turn four, which was the car that went wide? Well, number two goes wide, possibly because he's already got a puncture, the puncture on the other side. And he hits one of the uh, oh, the tyres already well, well I'm down. Not sure. He already hits the Seedler car. Not... Robbie Fritz dropped off the tail of Andrea Cordarelli, so he dropped his pace. Then he put himself straight in front of Adam Christodoulou in the red Mercedes. But did he break? Uh, bottom, I think he might have braked a little early. I you think can he, see. he certainly braked really heavily at the point when they're in the braking zone because Adam Christodoulou was on his brakes. But uh, clearly the idea looked to me to be slowing down, but we hate wait and see what the judgment will be on that particular incident. Warning flag for driving standards, as we call them here. But uh, the job has been done. He's got a little bit of uh, rear bodywork damage. You can see where the front of the Mercedes hit the left rear of the number 17 Audi, all being watched from the pit wall by Brains Trust and Team WRT, Aka ASP. Not too happy in their camp either. So and let's take a look at the points. Marcello and Meadows, 93 and a half. Rivera and Beast now 93 and a half. But they have three wins. And even if Marcello and Meadows wins this afternoon, they will only go to two. So the team currently listed as second will actually take the championship. So there's a very smoky. And that's the well, is that the number well, three one? What did I say? Well, what it's completely I, overheated. It's as you predicted, you, you, John. The, the thing is just boiling like the proverbial pressure cooker. And that's the result of driving around with that piece of advertising cars now making their way into the pit lane. Well, maybe they thought they could do one for the lap. Maybe the team didn't quite see it in time. Christopher Mies is in, as is Adam Christodoulou. So the number one Audi already in the pit lane. That's an early stop. Maybe a good move from WRT to get that car out of the group of cars directly ahead. So the number one car makes its way. It's the last pit box in the pit lane. Well, so it gives us a clear visual, John, because Chris Dudu in on the same map. They weren't actually that close or being held up by uh, Andrea Cordarelli in the number 19 Lamborghini, but it's a tactical move, this. So Christian Meese, his championship is run. It's now in the hands of his teammate, the Spaniard, Alex Ribera, spotted on board. And after the misdemeanors yesterday with the straps, all drivers will be checking and they chat, strap their teammate in that the hands device is covered by the Yeah, and more importantly, a set of brand new sticker tires, the Mercedes, that's... That is the that is, is the ASP. He's gained, a, he's gained about three or four seconds on uh, Adam Chris Dulu's car, which is now being driven the 87 car by Nico Jamin, a very impressive young French driver. So Dries Van Tor back into the pits for a second time. Of course, he came in. You can see the anger slams the door. He wasn't happy about that puncture on the opening lap. 25 in, so that's the Christopher Hasser car has come in. So that's going to be a quick turnaround for Simon Gachet. They're not in the race per se, but they could assist with further progress. 
And so the two Mercedes, Lucas Stoltz leading led away from pole position, being chased all the way by Raffaele Marcello, and they come in together. But how good are these pit stops going to be? How many more places can be gained by the number one Audi while they're out on the circuit? I don't think it's going to come out ahead of these two come down the track, but he's got to just keep his eye on the next target up the track, which is uh, waiting for the pit stops to be finished. We've just seen Robin Freitz going back. Last few cars coming to make their calls, including the Pro-Am. Freitz doesn't, look, in this doesn't race. look like there's a brand new tyre to me. He looks no. like he've had a run. So the 88 comes down off the jacket, can't go until everybody's behind that yellow line, so it's rolling. So where's the number six? It's sitting still up at its jack, so is this a pass? Again, it's a free pass in effect for the 88. Now it comes out behind so good job by the Aka ASP team. Black Falcon a little bit behind in terms of overall pit stop time, and that's going to give the lead effectively now to Michael Meadows. It's his job, it's his race to win, but it's his championship to lose potentially. And now it's a question of how many places can be gained in fifth at the moment. The number one Audi needs Looking to be Looking to go off the inside into turn 11, but wasn't really far enough up to make it a, a viable now. Coming through turn 12, up the inside again. Here's Chris Reinker of Audi, just coming out to have a little talk to Vance Boss. But look, the clock on the top of the screen, it's tumbling down, just under 16 minutes remaining, so negotiations are going to have to be very rapid indeed. The gaps continue to come down, Riveras and Strott Horse, and they're catching the overall race leaders, but right now it's just about this one position that really counts. Now, once what has been masked in all of this, we came into this... Uh, race meeting with five crews that could take the overall championship, but uh, the progress through the year and through this meeting, almost masked by all the comings and goings at the top of the table, is the consistently consistent improvement of the 66 crew that's holding down fourth place. They could finish this championship in third place. They'll move ahead of the 63 Lamborghini crew, who are out of it, disqualified from this meeting, and that will be... That is why they're hanging on so hard to that and, and fourth place. It's absolutely right to do so. Well, the longer it goes on, the longer Chris Riker is going to have to try and work out how he can separate the Roaring Party. He's, he's enjoying it. He's actually enjoying this battle. <laughs> Audi are going to be wondering whether there will be any cooperation between the respective outfits, the Tempter Racing and WRT. Raffaele Marcello still staring at the screens. His car is most likely heading for victory. Adam Christodou offers his comments from aside so things getting closer and closer Hubert Hounds he's going to try and get right onto the tail of Michael Meadows wake up wake up Michael I know he's got it under control but uh, 1.2 seconds became 0.9 it's now become 0.65 of a second and imagine as we have these confusions between the Audis who's going to help who who is not going to help who, who certainly if the Black Falcon Mercedes are dive up the inside the door has been left open by Stein Schottenhorst I think the word may have been had because uh, he wouldn't have been caught napping like that but he's fighting back so maybe he was simply half asleep but it was a uh, a brave dive, but don't forget that was the very corner where the number two Audi had a clash side by side and picked up a puncture in the first lap of the race. Down the inside comes Rivera. He's got desperate. He's pushed the 66 car wide. Was the contact? I do not know, but certainly I can't understand why it was all so easy down at turn one. But the game stage shot horse fights back. Maybe this is for real. Let's hope it is. And certainly Alex Rivera is doing his utmost. Now the corner goes Rivera's way because they've got to go to their left. So shot horse is going to be pushed wide out of turn five. Ezekiel Perez compact's car with Andrew Calder. So he's getting close closer and closer the Lamborghini could mix this up as well if he goes past uh, Christopher uh, Alex Rivera oh Raffaele Marcello <laughs> thinks they've survived that one has the Lamborghini gone past certainly the 66 now he's still in front and he's passed both of them so down into sixth place but uh, State Short Horse has made a few little mistakes and now I think there is possibly a puncture because off at the bottom of the hill goes the number one Audi Terry Tassar and San Voss cannot bear to look at their screens it was a real couple of serious examples I thought it, the position was being handed over but they were brave, brave dives from Alex Riveras. State Shot Horse does not know when he's beaten. Out of the gravel, desperately trying to continue. Is there a puncture? You certainly feel there must be. When he went off the bottom of the hill, Alex Riveras, cruel, cruel luck. He made two, if not three moves. They slowed each other down with their fighting. The Lamborghini claim came up and joined in there to make things very, very complicated. But it appears simple now. The place, the fourth place that was so, so desperately needed is not in the hands of Alex Riveras. He's fallen back to sixth, possibly seventh or even eight and there Riberas parking up not in the mood for celebration what a championship this has been started at Zolder went to Brands Hatch Pizarro the Hungara ring races were in the wet and now in perfect conditions at the Nürburgring the rumbling sound of those two Mercedes AMGs and importantly the one in front is the yellow and grey one the race scout car from Aka ASP Michael Meadows coming round they won the second race in the Hungara ring they have won the second race here and with it the title for 2018 a brilliant run to second place 
by the Black Falcon crew, and for Audi, it could have been their day. It so nearly was. There we have it. Overall points, 98 points. So it looks like a big victory, seven and a half points at the end, but that was only in the final lap and a half that it went their way because hunting them down, Alex Riberis knew he had to get one place. And uh, as you can see, Van der Linde and Shot Horse in the final race, the last round of the Sprint Cup, moved ahead. Dries Van Tor and Will Stevens and the Golden Trophies for the Golden Boys. And there